We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? If you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. It's not just a lot of mysterious things happening. There's a lot we understand out there. And that understanding empowers you. If you base medicine on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio. This is 141B, the science episode, recorded Friday, January 27th, 2017, where we dismantle current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really. I'm still Andy Cowan, and I still have Stephen Griffith, Daniel Atherton, and Amber Besecker. Welcome back, everyone. Not that you actually went anywhere, and hopefully everyone that's still out there watching in the live feed is still there. Yes, we have seven viewers still, so thank you all for being here. Okay, dokie. So, um... Again, we make mistakes. We are human beings, and, well, this is a fact-based segment. Therefore, we would like to keep our facts straight in this alt-fact reality that we are in. So please, if you find mistakes, go ahead and pause the podcast or whatever method that you happen to be watching us with and send us a note at oreallyradiopodcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. If you're watching right now, you can correct us real-time directly in the chat room. And uh, and we definitely appreciate things like that. Okay, <clears throat> so science. Uh, Harvard doctors um, or doctors at Harvard, um, you know that big school with a lot of smart people. Um, they have uh, they have mentioned that getting rid of President Obama's signature health care reform, you know the Affordable Care Act, is going to result in a whopping. 43,956 deaths per year. Per year. Uh, The information is compiled uh, based on numbers from the New England Journal of Medicine's findings uh, that for every 455 people across multiple states who receive health insurance through Medicaid expansion, at least one life was saved due to finally being able to see a doctor. The new the New England Journal of Medicine sample found uh, focused on Arizona, Maine, and New York, states that dramatically increased adult eligibility for Medicaid, and consisted of adults between the ages of 20 and 64. That's our largest population segment, in case you're curious. Observed five years prior to and after the expansion of Medicaid programs from 1997 through 2007. <sighs> Thoughts, my lovely panel? Are they taking into account what's going to happen with the defunding of Planned Parenthood in those numbers? I don't believe they are. No. Because we're talking about losing out on cancer screenings for both men and women, Mm -hmm. um, reproductive health. um, Which can also lead to complications and death. Exactly. Prenatal care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, for incidentally, you know, like everybody talks about Planned Parenthood for abortions. Mm-hmm. I got my pregnancy confirmed at a Planned Parenthood, which was how I was able at the time to get on Medicaid because I was, you know, night, uh, 20 years old and terrified and had no insurance, uh, no idea what to do. Um, so Planned Parenthood kind of saved my life because I was a high risk pregnancy and needed a substantial amount of care. And without their confirmation of my pregnancy, I wouldn't have been able to afford to go into a doctor to get it confirmed, to send the paperwork into Medicaid to get the care I needed for myself and my child. So I think those numbers are going to be higher. Probably. I, I can't doubt that. I think yeah. I agree with you. I think they're low balling it. I mean, they can only go with, with standardized numbers, but I think in the long run, once that once they actually get hard data points, yeah, we'll, we'll probably see numbers. Well, this is that. narrow. This is just the Affordable <clears throat> Care Act. The Affordable yeah. Care Act is not handling things for Planned Parenthood or alternative services. No. This is just the minimum coverage standard that is keeping people alive. Right. 
with people being able to get insurance with pre-existing conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that we all know somebody that has a pre-existing condition that was not able to get coverage before. Yeah, good luck to anyone with chronic mental illness to get yeah. their meds. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. No, really, that's actually, good luck. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. in one way, yeah, actually, good luck. But, I mean, because we needed more of that as a country. Well, again, one of Hillary's things that she didn't play up enough and and as she was running for, for president was she wanted to expand mental health care. That was that was that was put onto her platform right after she won the primary. Mm-hmm. Here we're getting a, a Reagan like hi mental health doesn't exist. Yeah, there, there's a lot of that. They they would prefer to sweep that under the rug and, and ignore it. Mama Van is alive because of the Affordable Care Act. So we have we have somebody that's participating in the show directly that is affected by this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I wanted to mention, incidentally, as well, that maternal death rates in the U.S. have worsened since 2000 as of 2016. Um, and that's with the Affordable Care Act, so it's about to get worse. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, in also, one of the most prosperous countries in the world. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, had the Affordable Care Act been enacted earlier, uh, I probably wouldn't have lost somebody. Yeah. I know several people. Well, I can mm-hmm. say I knew several people that would have benefited. This is going to be a hard issue for a lot of people. And I don't know if this is one of those things that has to get worse before it gets better. You know, one of those, the pendulum doth swing both ways. So we had it swing over to more people being on it. That's saving a lot of people. And now the people that it was affecting their bottom line, as I was saying at the end of their our first segment, the capitalists, the pure capitalists, as it's affecting their bottom line, they don't want it. So they're cutting it because they got in power. It's going to swing the other way. It's going to cut like a knife. Well, and then so many people are going to realize they actually need it. Maybe it will swing even harder the other way and will go to complete socialized medicine. But will the quote unquote right <clears throat> kind of people be dying and suffering for anyone to care. That is an excellent point. However, uh, yeah. if I may, something that came up earlier in the week, mm-hmm. um, Steve, practice your Google foo. Uh, look up the <laughs> sessions um, preferred care act or the a sessions health care bill. Um, oh. It's, Oh, the patient so the, protection. Oh, I asked that one. It, Jeff it, Sessions on healthcare. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Sessions and another senator uh, or House member. I can't remember who. Uh, just came up with the Republican replacement plan for the ACA. Um, I, I saw articles on it. Uh, Sessions Cassidy bill. Uh, yes, Sessions Cassidy. Um. This is their response, considering that the constituencies are going, we like the Affordable Care Act, we want to keep it, and them going, well, we need to repeal Obamacare because that's our job, thanks being Republican. Um, and they're keeping a number of things from the ACA. However, this bill is insanely convoluted that the few health care Professionals who have looked at it say instead of simplifying, which has been the greatest con- contributor to the, the Republican argument against the ACA, mm-hmm. this is far more complicated, mm-hmm. vastly. And uh, and yet it's only 117 pages long. Yeah, I'm looking well, at it. It's worded incredibly vague. They don't have a lot of things 
properly defined. Yeah, it's it does nothing about limiting malpractice litigation, says almost nothing about abortion other than that Medicaid is prohibited from funding any abortion, no exceptions. It does not promote sale of insurance across state lines. It gives states almost absolute authority to regulate insurance within their borders, including allowing the imposition of coverage mandates, which it, uh Interstate sales are meant to undermine. It does not embrace high-risk pools or association health plans, but it does promote health savings accounts, HSAs, but quote-unquote Roth HSAs with back-end tax benefits rather than traditional HSAs with front-end benefits. It imposes a per capita cap on Medicaid funding but does so using an incredibly complex approach that would ease the transition from the current program and in the short run ease the burden on the states. It undermines the current tax exclusions that support our employer-sponsored health coverage system, which covers most Americans, but leaves tax exclusion financed employer coverage available as an option for existing employers who still want to offer it. Amber, can you drop a link to to whatever it is that you just read? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Where do you want it? Uh, right under here. Put it there. Um. Ah, no. I put it in the wrong place because I'm an idiot. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I was editing the, the bottom thing that you told me to edit, and I left the cursor there. All right. It's there now. It's okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So you, too, can find that in our show notes, available at OReallyRadio.com for show 141B. <clears throat> okay. And by all means, take a hard look at it, because this is the thing that they're going to try and pass through as the replacement. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is, it, what it says here is, without more detail, it is impossible to know whether it would increase or decrease coverage. Certain aspects of HALA, I guess is what they're calling it, should expand coverage, universal tax credits, auto-enrollment by the states, penalties for not maintaining continuous coverage, and the availability of low-cost but low-value insurance. Moreover, in the short term, individuals and families currently covered by income-based tax credits and the Medicaid expansions would be grandfathered. But on the other hand... Provisions of the HALA cutting Medicaid eligibility levels, imposing a per capita cap on and eventually reducing Medicaid funding to the states, limiting access to income-based tax credits, repealing the individual and employer mandates, and encouraging employers to drop tax exclusion subsidized employer-sponsored coverage would tend to increase the number of the uninsured. Okay, so... What I heard in Sorry there, for throwing the rabbit hole in here, but... No, this is what the show is for. So, what I heard in there was at least one thing that is an identical complaint of the ACA, which is if you don't... that You know, being a penalty for not having continuous coverage. So, if for some reason you drop out, then you're still going to be penalized. Yes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And they're adding in coverage that sucks. Yeah. So for those of you out there that really liked that horrible plan that wouldn't keep you alive, which is <laughs> why it was removed from the Affordable Care Act, which is why you couldn't keep that plan that you really liked, you get to have that shitty plan back. Mm-hmm. Congratulations! That's the only one you get. <laughs> That's the only one you'll get too. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. No, it, it's I. It's one of those bills I actually want to get my hands on and and tear into. Well, it's only 117 because, pages. It sounds like great bathroom reading. Because this this is the thing that they're going to try and push, push through. And from what I've heard from smarter people than myself, is it's an entire giant mess. And it's going to make things more complicated. Less people are going to be insured. And it's going to cost more money. Yeah, just because it's less pages oh. doesn't mean that it's less complicated. Oh, it automatically enrolls the uninsured as well. You oh. don't have a choice. Wait, what? What? So it acts as a tax. Forcing you to do something. Oh, the libertarians are going to love that. Well, Rand Paul has huh. apparently decided that he's going to write a health care bill as well. Um, I just haven't seen it yet. Does it involve mason jars and money in the backyard? Uh, Maybe. It, <laughs> the 
bill bars insurers from denying coverage to those with pre-existing conditions, but okay. it does allow them to charge higher rates to sick people who don't maintain continuous coverage. Oh. So you're going to be penalized for being sick. The same way you get penalized for getting in a car accident. Yep. That's your fault. Because, you know, being sick is Well, no, fault. well what they said there, you know, just to give to be fair to it, as long as you have maintained your coverage and don't try to get on on the bandwagon suddenly yeah. when you're sick. Let, yeah, let me rephrase what I meant there. They're going to charge the poor. They're going to penalize the poorest and, and sickest people because yeah. occasionally you can't afford continuous coverage because you literally don't have the money. So right. those are the people who are going to get penalized. Those are the people they want to die off anyway. Yes, yeah. like me. Yeah, those death panels you were talking about, they're here. But they're not the way they were advertised. The death panels are merely the insurance companies denying you coverage. Because it's it doesn't fit their capitalist bottom line. Yeah, there's an, uh, an interview here I'm going to post in the notes, too, because it's Bill Cassidy answering specific questions about it. Oh, good. Um, and I think it's disturbing, and we should all read it. Okay. So I'm just going to put it in the notes for us to read at our leisure. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and dissect this more for next week. Yeah. Okay. Because th this, this feels like a clear and present threat. Yeah. Thank you, Anonymous Buffalo. <laughs> uh, am I anonymous buffalo? You are, no? you are, you are anonymous, anonymous buffalo. You are anonymous buffalo. Yes. Oh shit! I was the anonymous buffalo all along. You were. You were. <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. Plot twist. Okay, so uh, Cherry Model, who is uh, new to our chat room, thank you for joining us. Uh, she says that uh, I, I assume it's she. Uh, I know someone who voted Trump and has ACA and still doesn't realize that they will be missing out. And then commenting on our commentary on it that this whole thing is just cheapening the product that they already have. Yeah. Uh, my friends, <laughs> uh, somebody on Facebook was letting me know that their old, uh, high, one of their old high school teachers said that Daniel is beautiful. <laughs> Daniel, you're beautiful. Why, well, thank you. In every single way. And words won't bring you down, man. I see. It's the beard. <laughs> it is. It's exactly it's, it's the beard. It is becoming more magnificent by the day. It, it gives me power. It is luxurious. Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know about look. I I have gotten. Do, no do you use the beard oil? Do you, do you have you tried any beer beard uh, essential oils and things like that? No, no. Right now, I, I'm just I'm just growing it out as much as possible because there will be some steampunking in the future here. So I want to get this mm. styled. So I did get some some mustache wax so I can actually twirl this yes. properly. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's good for the pontificating. I imagine, you know, definitely you know, stroke the beard in a thoughtful manner. Well, I, I have noticed on the handful of days that it has been very cold. Um, I have been less cold. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Do you at least wear a hat though? Because I mean, you, you've you've transferred the hair down. <laughs> it, it was already migrating itself. Um, <laughs> I, I just helped encourage it. Um, a slow march to magnificence. For those of you that only pick up the audio podcast, audio. you're missing out. And we have all of these archived at our YouTube channel. You can find the link uh, directly on our webpage. Every Every post has uh, has the video as well as the audio feed, so you can go check out all of that at oreillyradio.com, and you can find you can it all right there. Even going through the old episodes, see the growing of the beard. That's right. You can see um, it progress. <laughs> yeah. I never did go back uh, all the way to figure out when you went from having baby <laughs> face to, you know, growing the stubble. But uh, it'd be interesting. So if, if any listeners out there would like to go through... You know, you, you can see, you can see it. Go, go find out and tell us when Daniel started growing his beard. Should get some glamour shots, put them up on the website. Actually, we should because we, we need to have have all the headshots <laughs> oh, and everything. Oh so I, I need to update that. So um, we're going to move from that to um, Man Bear Pig. 
yeah, that's a <laughs> awesome segue, isn't it? Legit the anonymous, the anonymous buffalo <laughs> strikes again. <laughs> Legit science. Uh, controversial research on the creation of human animal embryos has been published. Well, anonymous buffalo, you you found this, so I did. So lead us off. <laughs> would you like me to I explain like... it? Yes, uh, so if you can. Two thirds of man bear pig going on uh, was my takeaway um, from this. They uh, scientists are reporting the results of controversial experiments that they say are encouraging them to continue to try to develop embryos that are part human and part animal. In a pair of papers published Thursday in the journals Nature and Cell, researchers reported that they were able to reverse diabetes in mice using mouse pancreas cells grown in rat embryos and were also able to get human cells to contribute to the development of tissues in pig embryos. Boy, that is all over the place. Yeah, both experiments support the kind of research that NPR profiled in May, the researchers say. These experiments took the research to the next stage using new gene editing techniques to modify pig embryos in the hopes that human stem cells placed inside them might begin to grow into human pancreases. Huh. For organ harvest. Yeah, yep. this is for organ harvesting, so you have yeah. very little rejection and just go. And yeah, you're creating chimera, which are these interesting genetic mm-hmm. crossbreed things. Yeah. Um, but they look just like whatever main animal they're supposed to be, but it's mostly for, yeah, for... Whatever manimal, research. is that what you said? Manimal! manimal. I remember manimal. manimal to oh be. my god! Oh. <laughs> that takes uh, me back. Bring it back to the 80s. <laughs> but yeah, um, the National Institutes of Health, they want to lift a moratorium on funding such research. Um, the moratorium was put in place because of concerns the research raised troubling ethical questions. Because it makes people feel uh, icky. Uh, yeah, the... the <laughs> The concern was under W's. Um, yeah, blurring gene. the line between species as well as you know the whole stem cells from fetuses thing. Yeah, no, they they got skeeved over this. Well, um, man, but... bear, pig will have his own his own washroom and water fountain. <laughs> I mean, that, there are also obvious, concerns right? the cells could form human eggs or sperm in farm animals such as cows, <sighs> sheep, or pigs, and then those animals could mate. And how, then how not produce expect, humans. How <laughs> else do you expect us to get a freaking centaur, man? <laughs> this is amazing. This is why we need better here? science education in this country. Because yeah. we yeah. already know this can't happen. Yeah. Let's remember. It's okay to combine human and other animal, but whatever you do, you know what happens if you can combine a cow and an octopus? Revocation of all funding and a visit from the ethics yeah. committee. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. No, this is actually great. Um, I know for a long time when it comes to heart valve replacement, uh, since there are very few mm-hmm. human analogs, they use pig analog. Mm-hmm. And bovine. But, yeah. This it allows for less rejection. No, this is fantastic, actually. Mm-hmm. Absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if, aside from the pancreas, if they could start promoting other things. Like um, a, a major issue for, for us humans is lungs. Um, if you need a lung replacement, that's kind of, hi, you're dead. Um, so you don't like iron actually... lungs? You're not a fan of iron lungs? No, <laughs> no. But being able to grow those, harvest those, and be able to to increase quality of life, care of life, and just life in general. Mm-hmm. Oh, it it is a grand idea, which is why apparently there's so many people that are skeezed out about it because you know. Well, because they watched Full Metal Alchemist and they have concerns. I don't think that's why. <laughs> <laughs> gonna go out on a limb here i don't think that's why what no no we're creating chimera not homunculus it's fine yeah completely that's... different category here yeah well the little girl wasn't a homunculus no, no, don't, just... don't go no. too... amber amber too listen soon. Too, too soon too never soon. too soon for <laughs> that little girl <laughs> okay well um so science so science <laughs> Man bear pig. Alchemy. Yes, we're on two thirds of the way closer to man bear pig. Excellent. And <laughs> girls are less likely to believe women can be brilliant. 
That is yeah. a sad state of affairs. Yes, it is, actually. So this is out on NPR.org. Um, uh, I saw this one. By the way, shout out to thank you, NPR, for doing really good work. Yeah, um, we hope that your funding <clears throat> continues, please. Oh, good Support. heavens, please. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So, girls in the first few years of elementary school are less likely than boys to say that their own gender is really, really smart, and less likely to opt into a game described as being for super smart kids, research finds. Yeah, um, when they're five years old and younger, both genders tend to think that their gender is the smartest. Um, but I, Actually, I think when they're five years old and younger, they don't recognize different genders very much. As being a, a thing. I, I know that's the way it was with my girls. They didn't really care. But once they hit six, something happens. Ish. Yeah. Different, it's around, different kids, yeah. It is vaguely around the age you start getting into Kindergarten. school. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, six is a kindergarten age. Yeah. Which is when they're typically amongst groups of people that are then also segregated into boys and girls washrooms mm-hmm. and they're all the, the battle of the sexes immediately happens because there is a division there. Yeah. My daughter's eight. And ever since she started kindergarten every day, it's something about the boys aren't allowed to play with girls. Girls aren't allowed to play with boys or boys are telling her that girls are stupid um, and it's just a constant day after cruel. day of me reinforcing that girls are smart and fine and et cetera. Yeah. And being a good parent, that's what we do. Yep. That's what we do. We have to do that. But it I, sucks that it's part of the job. It Yeah, it shouldn't have to be part of the job. It should just be given. It just is. Given. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, it's a given that it's a part of the job. Um so, yeah, uh, if you're a parent and an aware parent, somebody that's actually taking an active interest in your child's life, you already know about this. I really, yeah. I thought you said aware parent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> aware, aware parent. Aware parent. <laughs> the moon comes out, suddenly child. Like, whoa. <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> it, it was interesting, the numbers that... <laughs> Across the various questions, five-year-old boys said their own gender was smart 71% of the time, and girls said 60, that theirs was 69% of the time. But among six-year-olds, the numbers were 65% for boys and 48% for girls. Seven-year-olds, 68% for boys and 54% for girls. Interesting. So the, there is, like, like you were saying, like mm-hmm. after five, there is this widening of the gap. Now, also, there's, there is... Um... A difference in learning behavior as well as those hormones start to start to flow and more gender identity is assessed. Uh, boys tend to be more aggressive naturally. Uh, of course, I'm speaking in broad generalities and there are exceptions to every rule. And yes, your child is an individual snowflake and perfect. I know this. I know this entirely. So I'm obviously not talking about your child. I'm talking about all the other children. So just let me t- let me continue. So with with that, just from what I've noticed is that girls do tend to work into certain aspects of behavior slower than boys will just power down a you know down a ladder head first into they- into the knives and just do it. Well, they Whereas did a study on that, too, as to why, and they, they found it was about expectations, that mm-hmm. girls were more likely to get reprimanded for aggressive, loud behavior than boys were. Right, because they're supposed it to was, act a certain way, yes, it was and the boys, boys are be just boys expected thing, to be this And then way. when a girl did it, it wasn't okay, and, and on top of that, if uh, a black girl or uh, any other ethnicity mm-hmm. but white, they were more likely to be reprimanded more severely than the white children were. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I'm sure that you've seen it. The, the videos where they've taken the, taken the Mm -hmm. children of different ethnicities and shown them dolls with, you know, a white doll, black doll. And it's fucking heartbreaking. Yeah. 
And it's like, sh uh, can you point to the good doll? And, and it's the white one. And it's the white one every time. Every time. So mm -hmm. there is something that is cultural happening in that. And I don't know how that we can cleanse ourselves of the, that kind so of infection. Further down, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> research does suggest that role models might inoculate women and members of other underrepresented groups. Ah, yes, that's good news. Yeah, so, so the movie Hidden Figures, about female African-American mathematicians at NASA during the late 1950s and early 1960s, could inspire girls and teens of color to pursue STEM fields. That was a fantastic movie. I want to see it. And you so need to go see it. You absolutely need to go see it. It is so well done. Again, representation matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Representation this is media why. matters. We have the research. We have the numbers. Mm -hmm. If we want to grow positively as a society, representation must be there. And this is why we need the National Endowment of the Arts. <laughs> <laughs> as he really looks directly at the camera the and into your eyes, the mm. American public. Into your soul. Right into it. <laughs> Talking to you, Trump. Talking man, to you. Majestic beard. <laughs> the man's beautiful beard. The, the beard demands the arts. It Listen to the beard. Gently in the wind, its many <laughs> tendrils reaching out. Whoa! Actually, I just <laughs> recently had a gust Says the of wind that pulled on the beard, and I was going, "That's a new sensation." But um, I was going, "Okay," and we're realizing that once again, Amber is a Lovecraftian author. <laughs> <laughs> I do not no. have a Cthulian beard. Well, you, you can though. work on that. With the right rituals. You can rituals. change that. With, with the, the right, right rituals. With the right, rituals with the right essential oils and the, and the wax, you can, you can do it. We have faith in you. You can make this happen. The right blood sacrifice will get you everywhere, as Donald Trump has shown us. <laughs> Don't speak not Russian. <clears throat> <laughs> um, oh, oh my. Um, well, I thought in order to summon Cthulhu, you had to speak German with a Jamaican accent. Uh, <laughs> no, that's just Elder Tongue. <laughs> German with, an, with a Jamaican accent is Elder Tongue? Or is that what that's you're saying? Yes. Elder Tongue sounds like. Yes, oh. we have decided. That. Okay, well, you know. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, Cthulhu Think about the talking. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. I, I speak a little bit of German. And I guess I could do a Jamaican accent. Hmm. So you could speak a little bit of Relayan then. I I may be able to. I don't know. But you know, See, I this think is, we're going places. You guys, I we're going to get him his Cthulian beard. I think I think Russian though may may have no beard left behind it too. So yeah, a little, little Slavic. Something is that would probably be better legislated than the the ACA. No <laughs> beard left behind. <laughs> no beard left behind. Oh, yeah. That. I will let Betsy DeVos <clears throat> be in charge of No Beer Bit Left Behind. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would let her be be a part of that. I she would could be somebody's beer troll, we know. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain the answers in front of Congress. Wow, you know, I thought there was another another topic here, but there isn't, so we're just going to riff on that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Um, no. So, <laughs> if you've enjoyed what we've done here, <laughs> and you'd like to help us out, there are a few ways that you can. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash radio and get early access to the show content. Reviews on iTunes will always help gain audience, and uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. And um, also, tell somebody about the show. Uh, word of mouth advertising always works, always has, always will. And of course, engage with us, uh, send us an email on the social medias or the electronic mails and etc. and all the all the messaging platforms etc. at overlyradiopodcast at gmail.com or of course on our um, Facebook feeds and, and all that available out on our website at oreallyradio.com. If you're the more talkative sort, how about 470-222-6759 that's always ready to take your call or your text. And Amber? 
go for it. And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255, available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been a really radio part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0, United States license, including the music Rocket and Pimgia, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. We'll see you real soon. I like that. That was good. Apparently, someone has done research and found that the, the, the beard started at episode 109. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chad Everly. <laughs> I know who that is.